Greetings, beloved. Welcome back to The Wednesday Word. I'm Chelsea Barrett. Beloved, today I want to ask you one question. Does what you're doing make sense? I mean, really think about it. The things that you are doing, do they make sense? What you did today, what you did yesterday, the things that you do daily, the things that you do regularly, do they make sense? Beloved, I'm going to delve further into that today. I want to share some things with you that the Lord gave me. You know, I have good ideas, but my good ideas are not always God's ideas for me to share with you on this program. So I'm very careful to go before the Lord to say, God, what do you want me to share today? How do you want this program to look today? I'm very careful to make sure that I'm not just giving you my good ideas, but I'm giving you God's ideas, what God wants to say to you today. So before I delve in there, I just want to make a couple of quick announcements. Beloved, I want to say thank you so much to each and every one of you. Thank you to all the viewers who watch regularly, who support us in prayer, who support us financially. I especially want to take this moment right now to say thank you to all of those who support us financially, whether you have given a one-time gift or you've become a partner and you're giving a reoccurring gift. Thank you so much for that. It means a lot to me personally, as well as to the ministry and to the community that we are supporting. Because of your generous gifts, I mentioned a couple weeks ago that we want to, as a ministry, buy a couple of jackets for some disadvantaged um, communities. There's a community next door to mine. Um, it borders the, the county that I live in. And there is a school in particular, I mentioned this, that have, they have some needs. Well, anyway, you all have sewn into this ministry. So because you've sewn into this ministry, we're going to be able to buy jackets for some people who would not otherwise be able to buy these uniform jackets for their children. So thank you for that. Thank you for your love, your support, your prayers, and the finances that you support uh, this ministry with. I want you to know that it is going to good use. And uh, as the weeks um, continue to go by and we're able to buy these jackets and get them in the hands of who needs to have them, we're going to bring some reports to you so you see what's happening in this ministry. Amen. As well, beloved, I want to invite you to visit our website, www.freedomscallingnow.com. There are resources on our website for you. A number of you have reached out to me about one-on-one -on -one coaching or counseling. In this season, I'm not able to do that. Last year, during the beginning of the year to halfway through, that was something that the Lord had me doing one-on-one -on -one counseling. But because of what I'm doing now, I'm not able to provide one-on-one -on -one counseling or coaching. However, we have a resource on our website. I'm going to link it below. I have a very trusted, trusted partner who I work with, Prophet Eunice Brennan, who is available for one-on-one -on -one prophetic counseling or coaching. Sometimes you just, you need that person to come alongside you. Sometimes we're in situations where we can't hear the voice of God for ourselves, or we just, we need that insight. We need that support. A prophet Eunice Brennan is very reputable. I just, I love this woman. She's spoken into my life on many occasions, and I've just seen the fruit of her ministry in my life. So that resource is available to you for one on one prophetic counseling or coaching, as well as there may be some of you who you're going through a season of grief. You may have had a loved one who's passed away and just need some support there. I have some resources on my website for you there. Or if you need marriage counseling, there's a resource on our website for that as well. Just check out our resources page as well as the confessions page. I um, have a page that's set up there for confessions pertaining to your situation that line up with the Word of God. They come directly from the Word of God because there's nothing more powerful than the Word of God for you, beloved. There's nothing more powerful than the Word of God. God. When you pray with the Word of God and stay consistent with it, you're going to see results. So check that out, beloved. Check out all the resources that are available to you on our website. I also want to say a couple of you have reached out to me as well for mentoring. During this season, again, God has shifted some things, so I'm not able to do one-on-one -on -one mentoring, but I try during every program um, the Lord allows me to provide some type of insight. You know, mentoring, a lot of it's really just from sharing your experiences, things that you have gone through. I have my books that are available on the market, but I also try on these programs to share personal experiences. For me personally, what helps me is not hearing about someone's success when they've arrived. What helps me is hearing about the struggle, the things that they've gone through. So I could look through it and say, aha, there's a wisdom key. There's a nugget key right there for me to receive. So now I understand what I'm going through, or now I understand what to avoid, or now I understand how to apply this or what to do about that. 
So I try to bring those things as much as possible through everything that I produce, whether it's through our monthly newsletters that you can get by subscribing at our website, or through these weekly videos or books or whatever it is that the Lord has me to put out. I try to provide some level of coaching or mentoring that I really hope is helping you because that's the heart of this ministry. We want to help you. Our vision is to help you first and foremost hear the voice of God for yourself. Beloved, when you can hear the voice of God for yourself, that's when you truly experience freedom. That's why we call ourselves Freedom's Calling Ministries. We want you to experience freedom, to hear the voice of God for yourself, and to maximize His promises. So all of those are available for you at our website. Okay, beloved, so I'm going to jump right into it and provide kind of a teaching moment to you as well. I'd like to share how with, um, with you how things came about. When I was preparing for this program, the Lord didn't say anything to me. Sometimes the Lord will come to me and He'll tell me what He wants me to say. Sometimes it's an automatic download where it's almost word for word verbatim. He just gives me like the outline, the complete infrastructure of everything that He wants me to say. At other times, He may just give me one word and then I have to run with it. And just when I step out in faith, the Lord told me for this ministry to open my mouth wide and He will fill it. So because I have the faith in God, because He told me to do that, I didn't start this ministry on my own. Truth be told, I really didn't want to, but I submitted and now I want to because it is the plan of God for my life in this season. So the Lord said, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. So I have that trust in God that if he told me that once I desire to do it and posture myself to do it, he's going to fill my mouth with whatever it is he wants me to say to you every week. And God is faithful to do that. So sometimes I will just get in front of the camera and the Lord will begin speaking to me or he'll continue speaking to me as I go along. Sometimes the Lord just gives one sentence or one thing and then I just have to step out in faith on that one thing and speak what he gave me. And then as I sit there and begin to speak what he gave me, then he'll begin to speak into my ear, <clears throat> excuse me, or speak to my heart so that we can continue going with the flow of the Holy Spirit and what he wants me to say. For today, beloved, today was such where the Lord didn't say anything. He didn't come to me and tell me anything to speak for this program. So I had to seek the Lord. I'm like, God, Lord, you haven't said anything. What do you want me to say today on the Wednesday word? And what the Lord said to me was, be renewed in your mind. Be renewed. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So... As I always say, you have to ask God questions because initially when I heard that, God didn't say, this is definitely what you're going to say and then ABC comes next. So I asked questions. I'm like, okay, God, is that a word for me to say on the program or are you telling me that there's something about me today that I need to renew my mind? And the Lord was silent. So sometimes the Lord is that way. He'll give you something and be silent about it. So you have to ask questions and then you have to search and follow through. You have to search and see what God is saying. Proverbs 25, um, I think it's Proverbs 25 too says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search that matter out. So I didn't hear anything and I knew that I needed to hear something now, but I knew that when God's that way, it's because he wants me to run after him a little bit more. So I went and I got the Bible and I got the scripture that the Lord gave me. It is from uh, Romans 12 chapter two. And as I sat there and I just started meditating on the word, I read it as I'm going to read it for you today. Romans 12, chapter 2. And be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I just kept reading that again. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And as I sat there, beloved, and just meditated on that over and over again, and just I was still listening for what God wanted to say, then God began to download into me what he wanted me to say for this program as it relates to these scriptures. Well, the Lord spoke to me, beloved, for this program today, as if the Lord wants you to renew your mind. He wants you to take a look at the things that you do. Why do you do what you do? The things that you do today are creating tomorrows for you. The things that you do today are uh, setting up the future for you. So why do you do what you do? 
And the Lord said to me that there are some things that some of you are doing, and it's not necessarily that they're bad things. It's just that they're not productive. It doesn't make sense to be doing what you're doing. Does it make sense to sit there in front of the television for five hours? It's not necessarily that that's bad for you, but what is the fruit that it's producing? How is it going to help you tomorrow, beloved? Those are the things that God wants you to take a look at today, item by item in your life. What is it that you do? Why do you do it? Does it make sense? You know, I recall when I was about, I think I was around 21 years old, I was a senior account executive in this uh, corporate hotel property, and I was so excited to be in this new job and to be so young. All of my colleagues were at least 20 years older than me. So um, it was just exciting to get that opportunity at such a young age. And I remember as being a new uh, account manager there, my job was to book corporate accounts. Um, all of our jobs in that department really was to book these corporate accounts. We had to make money for our company by booking conventions into our property. And I remember I was so excited. I got this one client that came knocking at my door. We've been negotiating for a while and finally they said, yes, we will book our corporate event at your property. And uh, the, the client wanted to contract 300 rooms with some food and beverage. Uh, I think it was over the span of a week though. They wanted to stay at our property for a week with 300 rooms per night with food and beverage. And for a week, that's a lot of money. It's decent money. I saw, I'm like, yes, this is my first thing here that I'm gonna book in for this season. I'm so excited about it. But beloved, I was young. I was green. I was inexperienced. So the way that this worked is we couldn't just book things to book them. We had to go as we received the business that we wanted to present to the company. We had what we called in the mornings um, stand-up meeting or our sales meetings. So all of us as account managers, we would go before our director of revenue, our director of sales and marketing, and we would present our business that we wanted the organization to accept. And I remember when I presented um, the business that I wanted my organization to accept, my director gave me a very teaching, coachable moment at that time. And I was so excited about it. And uh, there was nothing on the books for that week that I wanted to place this piece of business, but it was 300 rooms, beloved. My director said to me, Chelsea, this is good, but you need to ask yourself when you're looking at business, does this make sense? And initially I thought, of course this makes sense. There's nothing on the books right now. This is a corporate group that wants to book 300 rooms with food and beverage. When there's nothing on there, of course this makes sense. That's what I was thinking as this young, green, uh, fresh out of college person. But my director said to me, initially, when you're just looking at it, it looks like it makes sense because there's nothing there but you need to look at the future. This 300 room group wants to take up our meeting space in our hotel for the span of one week. Right now, we, um, we're just in the early part of the season. We still have a long way to go. There are gonna be a lot of more bookings coming in. And the hotel had uh, close to around 1,400 rooms. So what he was showing me is that if I took this piece of business that was only 300 rooms and expanded it for the week that they wanted to stay, because they wanted the space that they did, the meeting space that they did, it was going to box the, the property out from taking a bigger group that would come. There could be a larger group that would want to come and they would maybe want to stay less days, but it would be more rooms. They would maybe want to pick up, say, a thousand rooms and they would have more food and beverage. But if I had this little group that was only 300 rooms booked and they were blocking the space for a whole week, then I would take on, I'm just going to use a thousand dollars, for example. I would take a thousand dollars from them per day when I could be getting, at a later date, if I just wait, I could be getting a larger group who would be paying me a million dollars per day, but I would box myself out if I uh, took this group that was only 300 rooms. And I never forgot, beloved, I never forgot that coachable moment. It just got me thinking about the future. This looks good now, or this may seem like it's doing no damage now, but does it make sense? Does it make sense? I want you to ask yourself that question today, beloved, and be honest. The things that you're doing, they may look good or you may think there's no harm to them and perhaps there is no harm to them, but is it setting you up for the future? Is it setting you up to be more profitable in the future? 
the Lord is reminding me of another time when uh, <laughs> I went on this fast. Beloved, let me tell you, I've said this before, but some of you are new, so I'm just going to say this again. Way back when, I used to be so hooked. When I say hooked, I mean hooked. I was hooked to soap operas. I was madly in love with soap operas. I would watch four of them every day all throughout, I think this may have started in middle school, middle school or before high school, all throughout college. And I had a, a, a process where I would go to work during the day, go to college during the night, come home from college, and then it would be me and these soap operas all night long. I had to watch four and a half hours of all of my soap operas every night. I gained a lot from them, regardless of what people may think. It's not just all about scandal. There were some things, some positive things that I picked up through these soap operas. But I remember going on this fast and the Lord just called me to a fast. It wasn't for any particular reason. He didn't speak anything to me. He just said, fast and seek my face. And I remember fasting for a week. I fasted for a week. And when I fast, I just, I block everything out. I don't watch TV. I don't go out, I just meditate on the Lord and I engage with the Lord. So beloved, during that time, I fasted with the Lord. Right after I got off that fast, something broke. The desire for the soap operas broke. Now I wasn't fasting from soap operas. I wasn't even fasting from TV. I was just fasting to consecrate myself to the Lord. But the desire for soap operas broke. The desire for TV in general broke. That's been way over 10 years. And since then, I've never really watched soap operas again. I may have seen something on YouTube about something going on with them or a show or something being canceled. But I've never sat down to watch soap operas again. And even television, since that day, beloved, my desire for television, it just left me. Not that there's anything wrong with television, not that I'm saying not to watch television, but I rarely ever watch television anymore. I may watch a movie or something, uh, I may go to a movie, um, I may catch some news on my iPad or iPhone, but just that desire, I just don't have a desire for television any longer like I used to. I don't have a desire for soap operas, I just don't have a desire to sit in front of any screen and just be hooked to it for hours and hours. And again, I just want to reiterate that I wasn't fasting from those things. The Lord just called me on a fast, and I was just seeking the presence of the Lord during that fast. But as a result, when you fast, when you get in the presence of the Lord, something falls off every time. That's been my experience. And when those things fall off, it frees you up to be more productive in other areas. When those things fell off, what I started noticing was I began to write more. I began to do more things for the Lord. I began to expand more, even career-wise, to do some more studying. So it, some things fell off and it made room for some things to set me up for my future. So beloved, today I want to ask you, does what you're doing make sense? The activities that you're involved in, are they setting you up for the future? Are they setting you up to reap the fruit, the reward of what God wants you to have for the future? God wants you to be renewed in your mind today. Don't be conformed to the world. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Go to the Lord. What I love, you all know I love to pray in the Spirit. I have found in my life that when I pray in the Spirit, like all kinds of things just begin to shift. Self-deliverance starts happening. Things that I need to let go of, I'm praying out in the Spirit. Because sometimes there are some things that you'll hold on to. And in the natural, you're not going to say, God, deliver me from this. God, let me leave this. Or you may not even know that it's something that you just need to break away from, whether it's seasonal or eternal. But when you're praying in the Spirit, you're praying out these mysteries. And what's happening is your mind starts to become renewed. Things that you hadn't even thought about, God is renewing your mind mind and you're praying out the good and the perfect will of God for your life, those things that are acceptable. So you'll start to see that as you feed on the word of God and as you pray in the spirit, that's how you renew your mind, beloved. You pray in the spirit, you start thinking on the things of God, you start meditating on the word and let the Lord start lining up in your life. Does this make sense? Does what I'm doing make sense? Does it make sense to be on Facebook for five hours a day or even one hour a day? Does it make sense? What are you gaining from that? Again, the activity doesn't necessarily have to be something that's daunting or negative, 
but does it make sense in this season? Is it going to get you closer to your goals? Is it going to get you closer to the Lord? Is it going to get you closer to your destiny, the future and plan that God has for your life today? I'm going to leave you with that question today, beloved. Does what you're doing make sense? I'm going to leave you with the Word of God, with Romans. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't be conformed. Let's read it as the Word says here, beloved, as I'm wrapping up. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I leave you with that today, beloved. I pray this has been a blessing to you today. God has good things for you. God is a good God. Not everything that's good is God, but God is a good God, beloved, and he has good things for you. He has great things planned for you today and always. So look to the Lord today as your light, as your salvation, as your helper. Beloved, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I love you. God loves you more. Take care for now, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.